Cryptography, Chapter 3. For many aspiring Security Plus candidates, this particular topic area is considered the most challenging, also requires probably the most memorization. What we'll help you do throughout this chapter is to help you to find patterns to correlate that memorization to make that process so much easier. Let's take a look at what the Security Plus knowledge objectives are for this topic. Number one, to understand the key concepts of cryptography, how it works, what's a symmetric algorithm, what's an asymmetric algorithm, and so on and so forth. We also want to see how we apply cryptography. In the real world, it's nice to know cryptography, but how do you actually apply it for different types of security objectives? A key area when you use public key cryptography is the whole area of public key infrastructure, which involves key management and many other important concepts. And also along with that, we want to take a look at how we implement public key infrastructure, including digital certificate management and any associated components. Our agenda. First of all, we need to find out what we expect to achieve with cryptography. What exactly are our goals? And then we want to make sure you're familiar with some terminology. Unless you're a day-to-day -day cryptographer, there's a strong likelihood that many of these terms may be totally new to you. And then we want to look at the uh, two basic sets of protection algorithms. They're referred to as symmetric key and asymmetric key. We also want to look at hashing, message authentication codes, and digital signatures. These are there to provide integrity to make sure that something hasn't changed. And then as we take a closer look at how we actually deploy public key cryptography, we're going to take a look at digital certificates and public key infrastructure. So up to this point in the agenda, we will be understanding the different cryptographic algorithms we have available to do our job. And then let's go out and apply them in a network. So we're going to take a look at virtual private networks and the use of cryptography throughout a network environment. And we're going to look at protocols such as IPsec, Secure Sockets Layer, and its air apparent transport layer security, and also Secure Shell. Also, we want to look at a very interesting area called steganography. It's really not cryptography, but it is another method for hiding data. And then we'll wrap up the chapter with the high points you need to be intimately familiar with for the exam, and we'll also point you to review questions. So first of all, what are we trying to achieve with cryptography? What are our goals? One of those, the one that most people are familiar with, is to maintain confidentiality. We want to make sure that unauthorized parties cannot access information unless we want them to. Another key area is solidly verifying the authenticity of a message and who sent it. Another key area is to ensure that something hasn't changed. In another part of the course, we talked about forensics. We talked about how to preserve the evidence to prove to the judge and jury that the data had not been altered from the time that was gathered from the PC that's in question. So integrity is a very important goal of cryptography. And finally, non-repudiation. Non-repudiation ties in with electronic commerce, where, for example, now that uh, bigdeal.harry.com is so successful, he wants to throw this big party, and he ordered 100 cases of cores and then claims he did not make that order, but by using non-repudiation saying, sorry, Harry, you actually did order those 100 cases of cores. Now, let's first of all make sure we understand what the term cryptography means. It's the art and science of hiding the meaning of communication from unintended recipients. Now, we can do hiding over a network. We can also do hiding when we've stored data. To further understand what we're trying to achieve with cryptography, we're transforming data into an unreadable, referred to as encrypted or scrambled form, and it can only be reversed, deciphered, by using decryption, unscrambling, if you will, by using some type of secret key. See, a lot of folks, myself included, from time to time, we fall into the trap of calling all of this encryption. But in reality, encryption is only half the process. That's the scrambling act. But to make it valuable, the party that's going to use it on the other end of the line, if you will, has to decrypt it. Let's talk about some terms you need to be familiar with that tie into the whole area of cryptography. Another term for encrypting data is the term cipher, the process of taking plain text and turning it into cipher text in reverse. So encipherment, the term encipher means you're doing the encryption. Decipher is the reverse, where you're turning it back into readable form. The starting point and the ending point are clear text, sometimes referred to as plain text. 
and the actual encrypted data itself, the data that's in unreadable form, is referred to as ciphertext.